Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome back to JCLM School, the School of the Holy Spirit. And we are back in, in JCLM Global Class. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's all pray in tongues for two minutes and then we will start with today's session. Hare 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 Shetari Hare He Hare Shetaro Nara Shetari Hare 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 Shetaro Kotoro Kotoro Shete Hare Baraha Baraha Tara 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 Shetari Hare 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 Shetaro Kotoro Shetari Hare Hare Shete Hare Hare He Hare Shakara Tara Tara Shete Hare Hare Be 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 Kashinya Na Havaro Kotoro Kotoro Shete Hare Hare Shikana Havaro Kotoro Kotoro Shiteri Hare Hare Shakara Hatara Varo Kotoro Pashite Amana Havalo Kotoro Shatara Hatara Hatete Ebe Me 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 Shitari Tare Kanamaro Kobolo Kotoro Shiteri Teri Mana Hatara Paro Koro Kotoro Koko Shatari Tari Tari Hare Nini Mana Havaro Kotoro Shitari Tari Pare 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 Ara tara 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 shetaro koto ro koto ro shetari te hare tare shakara habalo koko shetari te epe pe pe shikara habara varo koto ro shetari te dara mana hana kana koto ro varo koto ro hare re kana mara habaro shetari tare tare vara habara shete epe pe pe shikala habara para habara tare shetari. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord. We are gathered in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us the truths which has been hidden all these days because we do not have much of knowledge. And now we have knowledge and from that knowledge we started to continue in the word and we shall know the truth and the truth has set us free lord as your word says in james 1 5 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask god that he give it to all men liberally and upgrade it not and it shall be given to him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed if we lack wisdom we need to ask our heavenly father in faith but not in fear whatever we need we need to ask god in faith many a times our faith lacks many a time our faith wavers like a sea that is because we have a doubt in what we asked whether God will make it for us or not when you doubt you you doubt on God's love and every system that we work gets short-circuited but the word of God says we have to ask in faith so faith is a very important thing for us in the kingdom of God and we are going to get everything what God has completed through faith and that faith has been given to us when we are born again each one has been measured with a measure given a measure of faith and now we need to build our faith using the promises of God thank you Lord Jesus that we are here from the morning in the afternoon and in the evening to renew your mind to renew our mind and to build the faith thank you holy spirit for teaching everything from the book through the promises of god and thank you for taking complete control of these sessions thank you for taking complete control of our vocal cords that we speak everything pertaining to the kingdom of god in faith we thank you and we praise you in the glorious and mightiest name of jesus let's all god people say amen amen and amen Okay, uh, we are going to see or study or I'm going to share about the why do you need 
the filling of the Holy Spirit. Why need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? That's what we are going to see today. Praise God. So we saw the life, the how the uh, Holy Spirit works in the life of the believers. We saw what is the benefits of the benefits of having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And today we are going to see how to be filled by the Holy Spirit. The word filled. Okay. If if you look from the English translation, it, it is different. But when you go from the Hebrew or a Greek translation, it is known as controlled or controlled and empowered. The word filled means controlled and empowered. When Jesus said you will be filled with the Holy Spirit or uh, in Acts, we learn that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit in full control and he is empowered us. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And this is what we have to discover in our Christian life. Learning how to be filled, that is controlled and empowered by the Holy Spirit by faith, can be the most important discovery of our Christian life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is an indwelling experience of the Holy Spirit and there is an infilling experience of the Holy Spirit. Indwelling experience is where you are being, uh, you know that the Holy Spirit is right inside of you. Infilling of the Holy Spirit is now you have been controlled and empowered, which means Holy Spirit wants to do so much of works in your life. And this is what we have to discover as a Christian. Okay, Christian life is not a life just to live and go like other people who are in this world. So we need to discover each and every assignment, each and every aspect of Christ which he has completed on the cross is for us and we need to discover those things and that is what Christian life is all about. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you, if you, if we go back to the, uh, the, in the Bible and if you see very carefully after the resurrection, uh, Jesus said and the last words which he spoke, which he spoke to his disciples is, uh, before ascending into heaven, he said that he commissioned his disciples to go to all the world and preach the gospel to make the disciples of the nation. If you see in Mark uh, chapter uh, 16, last verse, I think. Okay. okay. 14. Sorry, not last word. Oh, sorry. See, 15. Okay. And he said unto them, Okay, we will see 14 and 15. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, he see a commission, go you unto the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So there is a commandment or a commission by Lord Jesus Christ to the disciples that they have to go into all the world and preach the gospel uh, to all creature and uh, make disciples of nations as well. But he also said one thing, remember, don't leave Jerusalem until they have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that is in, I think it's in Matthew. Could not able to get that. One minute. Okay, praise God. So he said that 
you need to go into the world preach the gospel and we have to make the disciples of the nation apart from that he also said that he has to go to the, those people has to go to jerusalem and they have to stay there for some time until they have been filled with the power of the holy spirit in acts 1 8 we know that he said you will receive the power of the holy spirit okay if you go and see acts 1 8 But you shall receive the receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me in both Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And this is one of my favorite verse which I meditate. And he said that uh, he, he, now he said, but you shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we have already received it. Okay, and, and the Holy Ghost is upon us and we shall be witness to the people. We shall be witness unto Jesus both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So he is saying that Jesus was uh, saying to the disciples, even though you were with me for three years or more, but it's not enough for you that uh, you have heard the teaching and the healing in uh, uh, sick, even raise the dead, but you need to be empowered with the Holy Spirit or by the Holy Spirit in order to be effective and fruitful as the witness throughout the world. So Jesus is saying that three and a half hours, three and a half years, it's not okay to you. It's not enough. Okay, he said that I will send you another comforter. He will teach you everything. Praise God. He will teach you everything. He is going to empower you. And now you will be the witness throughout the world. And we saw that after receiving the Holy Spirit, the disciple's life has been already changed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The disciple's life was already changed. And they were going into the places and started to perform, uh, uh, preach the word of God and Holy Spirit, God who worked in them, accompanying with signs and wonders. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The more you respond to the gospel, praise God, the more you put what Jesus or the instructions which has been given by our Lord Jesus Christ into practice, now you see the hand of God is working in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. I was reading a testimony, okay, where a pastor uh, which have a congregation of 1,500 church members, okay, and uh, uh, he 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 did not experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit so uh, all these days. Okay, praise God. So he, he, was, uh, he was coming and giving the sermons, but he understood there is something missing, which uh, there is no fire or something. Uh, there is no a punch or a fire in his preaching. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At once he was exp uh, asking the Holy Spirit to help, asking Jesus to help. At one afternoon, he witnessed the Holy Spirit is coming inside of him like, uh, like, like the Holy Spirit now went into Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. After that, the preaching was entirely different. Okay. Uh, when you take the pulpit, there were massive healings. And uh, he started to preach the word in-depth understanding and everything. And now you could see the fullness of the Holy Spirit operating in this life by faith. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Soon the 1,500 congregation is increased to uh, 10 times where it came to 15,000 because the news started to go to many people along the area. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he will come with full power. 
and he will definitely change our lives praise god and and he will change our life not to the extent what we think but according to the extent what he wants to do in our everyday life see the christian life is not asking according to mark 11 23 24 and thanking all these or see when you look out for the wants of this world the wants will never ever stop okay when when one want is satisfied the the devil will come with another want so how long we are going to use mark 11 23 and 24 going to receive everything so why can't we use in a different way using mark 11 23 and 24 praise god uh, to remove all the uh, unbelief that is inside of you and say that lord i receive the power of the holy spirit thank you and wherever i go the holy spirit inside of me and now whatever i am speak the holy spirit is speaking on behalf of me and now you believe in faith and you put into practice that's the change you will see in your life the christian life is a great adventure it's a life of purpose it's a life of power the life of authority which christ has given to us through the promises of god we used to we we need to take the promises of god and we need to live a life like jesus in this planet earth but what type of life we are living if we have if they have 100% of uh, uh, christians are there only 10 or 15% take the life like jesus live and they go ahead and do it go ahead and do this but what about the rest of 85% or 80% every time they look out for this lord i need this lord i need that lord i need a job my son has to be like this my husband has to be like this praise god in john 14 uh, john 14 12 to 14 god gave us a very very powerful truth he said that i tell you the truth anyone who has faith in me will do what i am doing but how many times we meditated that scripture rather than i am the body of christ satan sickness in have no power over me yeah I, i you can do that i'm not saying that you should not do but at the same time you have to grow from faith to great glory to glory he said that i'll tell you the truth verily verily i say unto you if you believe in me have faith in me you can do the same things what i do even though greater things than these things because i am going to the father why when he goes to the father he sends you a comforter in his name so whatever you do it will bring glory to god let's go and see that john 14:12 See, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, works that I do, shall he do also greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father and see. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. the important part in verse number 13 is that the father may be glorified in the son praise god and if you ask, shall ask anything in my name i will do it so the holy spirit offers strength guidance to the believers you cannot accomplish anything with your own energy you cannot do anything that is in the bible with your own will power that's what jesus said unless and until i am the vine and you are the branches if you do abide in me if you not abide in me you cannot do nothing so it is a christ himself living with you and in all of his resurrection power walking around you in your body thinking with your mind mind of christ living with your heart through the romans 5 5 and now he is speaking with your lips praise god now he is empowering you with the power of the holy spirit to do all these great works see we recently we celebrated the resurrection okay christ resurrection so we all know that christ 
as victory over the kingdom of darkness okay what about our victory we know that christ has uh, uh, has victory over the kingdom of darkness he got the authority back and give it to us what about our victory are we living the same life before easter and after, after easter you, i i usually wait for 40 days for drinking and not even for 40 days i never cross 3 or 4 days i'll drink i'll drink i'll drink and in the holy week make a very uh, difficult task not to drink at all and i am not drinking on the easter sunday i will drink a lot so what is my uh, thinking point of view so i am using the victory of christ for me to fulfill my own selfish desires so the the, the 39 lashes the crown of uh, thorns nails in his hands legs and he resurrected from the dead all is for one glass of alcohol no it should be more than that his resurrection power is living inside you is walk around you in your body christ is alive inside of you and now we say we have the mind of christ now is christ is thinking on behalf of you helping you to love others and now we say we say that lord please take complete control of my vocal cords whatever i speak i should not speak anything contradicting to the word of god he is speaking through our lips all these things are happening by the holy spirit and why the holy spirit has given to us to do all these great works it's not on your own wisdom it's not on your logic it's not on your good personality it not on your you are so smart it's everything is because the son of god it is the son of man who came to seek and serve the lost who sent his holy spirit to fill and empower you so after the acts 18 the disciples were filled with the holy spirit they received a divine intervention of a supernatural power and now they changed from the fearful man to the radiant witness for christ they were used by god to change the course of history they were departed to so many areas of this world and now they started to plant the seed of christianity to in everywhere across the world that's where the christianity started to grow the same power of the holy spirit is available to you to enable you to live a holy life and fruitful life for jesus christ but what type of life we are living including me why we have been filled by the holy spirit because we want to do our own task my life has been changed because of the infilling of the holy spirit i did not understand initially but down the line when i started to spend more time in the word now i understood that oh my god the life which i'm giving life living right now it is not my life is the life of jesus christ and life and life i am living in the flesh flesh is it's a it's a life which god gave to me through jesus christ so then the holy spirit changed my thinking perspective and i was asking like all other people and now it has been changed and now i am asking lord give me the wisdom to solve people's problem and i believe that the wisdom is inside of me because the wisdom, the root of all wisdom is the holy spirit but tragically multitudes of christians do not even know who is the holy spirit it took 38 years to understand who is the holy spirit for me when we do not know that who is the holy spirit then how we will know how to appropriate his power in our life so if we don't use the power and authority which as god has given to us to use our life will not be as what christ want to live our life will not be supernatural i will not be beautiful our life will be full of problems 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 and problems
okay there was a uh, there was a uh, a small content which has been given by jb phillips okay he he, he wrote a book for the young churches what he said is the great difference between uh, the the great difference between the present day and the early Christ christianity is the new testament's epistles is to is that to us it is primarily a performance to them it to them it was a real experience okay the this this the the books we read the epistles that is of uh, 1 Corinthians 2 Corinthians Galatians Romans 1 Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians Philemon Titus John Peter everything are it's a it's primarily a performance to us but for them it's a real experience we just see as a performance but that's the true life of the Christians. Acts of Apostles, you can understand the work of the Holy Spirit in the, in the life of the believers. So there is a lot of untapped power which is inside of us. We haven't tapped it all of our lifetime. Now God is giving us an opportunity for us to be filled by the Holy Spirit to be tapped on to this power. Okay, we we have the experience of indwelling. When, when the Holy Communion is given to you, Holy Spirit comes inside of you, it, He dwells inside of you. But He could not able to perform anything on your behalf because the infilling is not at being done. So the, the word called filled means empower and control. Okay, when you say I have been filled with the Holy Spirit, which means now the Holy Spirit is in complete control of you and empower you to live a victorious life. To, 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 uh, to be a witness for Christ, to bear fruits, to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit in our everyday life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do we live a victorious life or we live a life of a failure? If you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, well and good. Spend more time with the Holy Spirit and ask more of revelations. When you ask more of revelations by wisdom and you receive it and you can perform much more with the power of the Holy Spirit. But if you are not experiencing the abandoned life which Jesus has promised, which is our heritage as a Christian, as a Christianity, now this is the time for us to change our thinking and, and to sincerely to do what God has called us to do. So when, when uh, you have to ask about some of, about five questions, to experience the abandoned and fruitful life which Lord has promised to each and every one of us who trust and obey Him. The first one, what we have to what we have to learn is, or the question, what we have to ask is, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? The second one is, why did He come? Third one is, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? The fourth question is, why is an average Christian not filled with the Holy Spirit? Okay, first is we need to understand who is the Holy Spirit. The second, we need to understand why he came. The third is, what do you mean by filled with the Holy Spirit, infilling of the Holy Spirit? The third one, why the Christians could not experience the infilling power of the Holy Spirit? And the last question, we would come to know that. Can you be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we will see one by one. So first of all, who is the Holy Spirit and why God sent him? We will, saw, we will see these two things. We all know that Holy Spirit is God. He is not an it. He is not a dove. He is not a fire. He is not a divine. 
influence is not a uh, uh, vanity or whatever it is praise god he is a person possessing a will intellect and emotions he is a person that's what the bible teaches us and when he comes which is the holy spirit okay we need to understand that holy spirit is a person it is jesus himself okay he is one of the uh, third uh, head of the holy trinity okay and uh, he has with uh, in he has uh, all the attributes of the deity he is the third person of the trinity third uh, god head third god head what is that god the father god the son and god the holy spirit but there is only one god but he manifests in a himself in a three different persons whom we call as a holy trinity so holy spirit is a person possessing a will intellect and emotions okay praise god that's what in ephesians and 1 thessalonians we study that uh, do not grieve the holy spirit and you do not quench the holy spirit in 1 thessalonians 19 i think we one is we see that do not quench the holy spirit which means don't uh, stop the fire of the holy spirit which is inside of you you will always encourage you empower you to do mighty things in the kingdom of god and the efficiency we studied that do not grieve which means do not make the holy spirit uh, sad grieve means to make sad he is a person he has a will and his will is to encourage us his will is to do mighty things in the kingdom of god and using his intellect on our behalf he also has an emotions and and moreover the bible teaches us that he is equal with god once a person was asking me uh, how come uh, one god will manifest into a three different uh, thing okay his question is to understand that what is the holy trinity or something like that so i uh, what once papa taught us this is what uh, we learned okay i am the person by name jude i am one person i can be fathers sorry not fathers i can be father to my children so i am manifesting as a father to my children i can be a husband to my wife the second uh, the third person i can be son to my mother or to my parents praise god so the same person jude is manifesting in a three different roles so in the same way god is one but he is manifesting in a three different person one is god jesus and then the holy spirit simple understanding don't get into deeper understanding about getting into the understand uh, about the word called trinity praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so holy spirit is a person okay first we need to understand that he is not a it he is not a dove he is not a fire he is not this he is not that he is a person praise god so first of all we have learned many things about the holy spirit so we can understood this the second one why did god send the holy spirit why did god sent the holy spirit john 14:26 okay but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remember whatsoever i have said unto you holy spirit is the counselor he is a helper he is a guide and he says that the father will send in his name he is going to teach you all things and remind you everything what jesus had said 
So in other words, without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit enabling you, you cannot know Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot experience the new birth. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not live and share the abundant life. And that's what Jesus promised. All who trust and obey him will receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, when you, when in my life, I did not understand who is God is. Why did Jesus came to this planet Earth? Why he should die a, die a death? to die for me why he has to come as a substitute for me why can't i die for myself and uh, 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 my understanding about the heavenly father is uh, he is a very cruel god he is a very uh, uh, punishing god praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so without the Holy Spirit, you will not understand who Christ, why he came, who is our Heavenly Father, what's happened in the Garden of Eden, why we have become sinner, why we have been called sinner because we commit sin or we have the sin nature. We had a lot of, lot of, lot of questions and only the Holy Spirit who taught us whatever Christ has taught to us. See, when Christ lived 2000 years before, Okay, and all those what Christ has told to the disciples, it has been inspired by the holy men to write in the form of a scripture. So as you study the Bible, the Holy Spirit reveals the truth, the mystery, which is hidden in that particular passage. If you study a scripture and when you study it and meditate, meditate, uh, again and again and again and again suddenly at one particular point of time a, a word of God a scripture will come to alive in your life why because the Holy Spirit makes that word of God relevant and meaningful when I need it okay uh, John 1 1 Papa usually say that right believing through uh, heart and believing through our mind. When we start confessing, when we start reading the Bible, initially we'll start to read it from our mind. But the more you engross into more, uh, getting into deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, now you understand and starting to study the Bible through your heart. And now you understood that Bible is a living book inspired by the Holy Spirit. Only Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit can understand the true meaning of God's word. I also read the Bible before accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord God and Savior. I read it, but I did not understand even a single comma or on, for, to, whatever it is. I did not understand anything. But when I understood, when I accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord God and Savior, and when I received the Holy Spirit and when I received the love of God, and now, praise God, uh, each and every scripture, each and every word, each and every comma, dot, semicolon, I understand what is that meaning of that particular scripture. So Christians who are filled with the spirit can understand the true meaning of God's word. That's what John 14, 26 says. Uh, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. So I can pray. I can make a confession. But I cannot expect God to answer my prayer unless and until I have the Holy Spirit who is inside of me. Unless and until I am walking with the Holy Spirit. Until, until and unless I have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, how to... 
how your prayer has to be backed up with the word of god and after making the prayer what has to be done and uh, how you are going to use the 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 word of god in your life everything has been taught by the holy spirit and when you are controlled and empowered by the holy spirit everything moves uh, in your life automatically and most important thing is i cannot live a holy life ap- apart from uh, the holy Sp- apart from the holy spirit helping me to live a holy life how can you be holy without the holy spirit uh i was speaking to one person okay and uh, he said that uh, so initially they were saying i do not want uh, to talk about the holy spirit and i don't like to pray in tongues i don't like this that and everything if anything you have to talk about jesus yes i am ready to do it so through the help of the holy spirit i reminded him that the reason the holy spirit came to talk about jesus the reason the holy spirit came to exalt and glorify christ without the holy spirit who, who, who do you know that jesus christ came and uh, died for you you are, yeah i know how do you know then there was a question mark you know through the bible you know through the wisdom of god and that wisdom comes from the holy spirit without the holy spirit's wisdom you will not understand even a single word from the bible see remember uh, uh, jesus said to nicodemus okay in john 3 unless a man is born of a water and a spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god what is that kingdom of god kingdom of god is to know god to know jesus christ to operate in joy righteousness and in holy ghost and moreover it is impossible for us to become a christian unless and until we have the holy spirit inside of us to explain the spiritual truth we have been born from a, a christian family we we might have got all the sacraments baptism confirmation communion confession this and everything and uh, some people would have might uh, went to marriage some people would have gone to holy orders some people would have gone anointing of the sick all these things are there but unless and until the holy spirit comes and opens your spiritual understanding you will not understand the bible and other spiritual truths which has been hidden over there okay let's see one scripture uh, here okay we'll see from 12 and 13 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god okay which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god how do we know that there are things freely given to god through the spirit of god but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god which things also we speak not the not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but with the holy ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with the spiritual we see in some other translation okay now we have received not the spirit of the world but the holy spirit who is from god so that we may know and understand the wonderful things freely given to us by god we also speak of these things not words taught or supplied by the human wisdom okay but in those taught by the spirit now the holy spirit is teaching you what to speak if i am speaking here it's not my own uh, intelligence 
okay it is the spirit who is teaching me what words to speak which scripture to go and what uh, uh, what i have to interpret and what i have to teach everything is given by the holy spirit there are 6000 8000 promises in the bible where to use which scripture is been given by the power of the holy spirit okay taught by the spirit combining and interpreting spiritual thoughts with the spiritual words so the holy spirit puts the thoughts into your mind at the same time now the, he also put the spiritual words into your mouth for those being guided by the holy spirit do you see that the last word for those who are being guided by the holy spirit praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so unless and until you been born of water and the spirit you will not be enter into the kingdom of god so it is impossible for us to become a christian without the holy spirit without the holy spirit you will not read understand bible you will not understand any spiritual truth you will not understand mysteries nothing you cannot live a holy life and you are just a normal person who is in this world that's what paul always pray that uh, let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened in ephesians 1:17 and 18 he says that let the god open the eyes of your understanding so no matter which family you are from i i know a person who comes from a family of priest but he doesn't know anything about the bible and they, and their brothers uh, the priests and all they were uh, trying on the hard to give these things nothing could uh, went in his mind but when he started to understand when he when he went to a, a retreat and that's where everything has been changed in his life he started to experience the holy spirit power in his life and now the holy spirit started to teach him and these brothers the brothers were full of deacons priests and they were so uh, what to say they're so shocked how come this person all of a sudden understood so many things that's what happened to paul praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so we now we know who is the holy spirit why the holy spirit has been sent to us okay two questions we are clear one is why did god send the holy spirit because without the holy spirit you cannot live a whole glorious life without the holy spirit you cannot glorify jesus without the holy spirit you can be you cannot experience the true abundant life which god has promised to each and every one of us okay the next one what we are going to see is what does it mean to be filled with the holy spirit what is the meaning of to meaning to be filled with the holy spirit as i said before to be the word filled means uh controlled and empowered or encouraged okay controlled and empowered okay when you are filled with the holy spirit now you are being controlled by the holy spirit holy spirit is giving you the instructions what to do and when you follow it there is going to be a supernatural things happening in your life okay if you go much more de- deeper about to be filled with the holy spirit means being filled with jesus christ holy spirit as we we, we studied in the previous question holy spirit came to glorify christ so when when the bible teaches us when you have been filled with the holy spirit you are abiding in christ and when you abide in christ you walk in light and he is the light the blood of jesus christ which cleanses and keep you cleansing from all unrighteousness let's go and see 1 john 1:7 but if we really walk in the light that is 
live each and every day in conformity with the precepts of God, as he himself in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. He is with us and he, we with him. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin by erasing by erasing the stain of sin, stain of sin, keeping us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestation. Okay, let's go as normal. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, okay, I did not share. Sorry. Praise God. So when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And uh, filled means it is uh, controlled and empowered. And now you are being controlled and empowered by Christ himself. And when you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you are abiding in Christ. Christ is abiding in you. And you are walking in the light. And he is the light and now the blood of Jesus cleanses you and keep you from cleanse and keeps you from all unrighteousness. So now when you are filled by the Holy Spirit, now you are controlled by the Christ because the word filling means to be controlled. Okay, for example, nowadays you have that artificial intelligence, right? You have that... Uh, robots i went to a restaurant okay where uh, the robots comes and serve the dishes praise god so they have a control where they, they have a, a very big place or thing over there praise god and they are in control and they're controlling each and every robot and the program has been made okay this dish has to be given to this plate Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So they have been controlled. Okay, I'm just giving you an example, a robot. But we are not controlled as a robots. Okay. But we have been led and empowered. Again, if you go into a deeper understanding of the word being controlled means, it is meaning led and empowered by the Spirit. Control means you you are led by so imagine you are filled with the holy spirit which means the lord jesus is walking on behalf of you in your body and his living resurrection power his resurrection life can be seen through me through others isn't this amazing so christ lives inside of you and this is love through you in one of the most important truths that the word of God is teaching us. See, the standard of Christian life is far more greater than what we are imagining of. It's very impossible to achieve this Christian life. According to the word of God, there is only one person who have, who have succeeded in the Christian life. That is Lord Jesus Christ and this Jesus Christ is right inside of you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Which means, filled means he wants to lead you. He wants to do, uh, Christ wants to do so good things in this world. Okay, he needs a body. See, when, when, uh, when uh, Jesus, to come to this planet Earth, he needs a body, correct? So that's what Mother, Mother Mary cooperated with her Heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit. Praise God, brought Jesus into this planet Earth. Jesus finished his work and he went. But again he came in the form of the Holy Spirit and now he needs a living body to perform the same thing what he did before he was doing in this planet earth. Christian life is not 
uh, you receive everything from God and you enjoy the life giving to others. It's much more greater than that. Now, Christ wants to do so many things in your life. And, and, he, he, and he, he wants us to cooperate with him. See, disciples received the power of the Holy Spirit in the Jerusalem. And after they received, they went forth and did mighty wonders. They started to preach and teach the word of God. The Holy Spirit accompanied with them with signs and wonders. They cooperated with the Holy Spirit to bring supernatural manifestation in the life. The Holy Spirit uh, led me to study an important part of uh, how people have been raised from the dead in the Bible. So I'm just, see, I was so excited when the Holy Spirit gave this conviction power to me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So now by faith, I could understand, I could uh, imagine that I'm I'm raising people from the dead. So I'm, I'm studying this. So unless and until the Holy Spirit convicts me, until the, until the Holy Spirit uh, enables me, encourages me, I cannot go into the topic deeper. So it's it's not it's not that I want to do this. It is the power of the Holy Spirit who wants to learn, who wants me to learn this kind of an option. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, is indwelling experience, is indwelling presence, is infilling presence wants us to enable all who wants to enable all who place the trust to him and to live the same supernatural life. We have been called to live a supernatural life. Ask a question to each and every one of you for listening to the teaching, including me. Are you living a supernatural life? The first person would be answering, "I'm no, I'm not living a supernatural life at all. Because all this time, I thought the Holy Spirit is for me to fulfill my fleshy desires. But the, 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 I understood down the line, the Holy Spirit is given to me to go and to be a blessing to the nations. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the, the to be filled means we have been controlled and uh, empowered or uh, the word controlled can be taken in a different way. Uh, filled means to be led and empowered by the Holy Spirit, led to live a supernatural life. Okay. What does, uh, what more we can learn to be filled with the Holy Spirit is another one is bearing spiritual fruit because Christ is living inside of you. If you are willing to live a life for Christ, if you believe that his resurrection life is right inside of you and you want to live that resurrection life, see the Holy Spirit is same yesterday, today and forever. The same Holy Spirit who created, uh, who was present in the in the creation of this universe, the same Holy Spirit who, who raised Jesus from the dead, the same Holy Spirit who were uh, in the Jerusalem, who filled with the who filled the the disciples, the same Holy Spirit is right inside of you. So, as a Christian, we have been expected to bear spiritual fruit as naturally as healthy wine will bear an abundant fruit. Okay, one minute. Sorry about that. Okay, how you will produce the fruit, abundant fruit? Without the wine, you will not produce the abundant fruit. Let's go and see John... Uh, uh, 15.5 I am the wine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I am in him, the same bringeth forth 
much fruit for without me you can do nothing so to bear the fruit we need wine to bear a healthy fruit we need a healthy wine to bear a spiritual fruit to the natural world we need a healthy wine and jesus is a supply of this healthy wine okay for a tree to bear the fruit it needs the sap and the sap has been supplied from the root so in the same way we need the wine that wine is the word of god that wine is the holy spirit and through that holy the wine the holy spirit uh, that's what the scripture says right to be drunk by the holy ghost ephesians 4 thank you holy spirit 429 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where is that scripture? Holy Spirit. Okay. Ephesians 5. Sorry. Okay. It's here. And be not drunk with the wine, that is the worldly wine, wherein is excess, but... be filled with the spirit which means thank you sister which means we have should drink the wine of the holy spirit praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so we need that wine to bear a healthy fruit the healthy spiritual fruit what is the fruit of the holy spirit love joy peace long suffering forbearance patience faithfulness all the nine fruits are there so we have been called to bear the abundant fruit with this abundant wine praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so the fruit of the holy spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control once this samantha was teaching how to differentiate this uh, the fruit of the holy spirit the first three comes from the from god or from the word of god love joy and peace okay uh, and the next three is you have to develop patience kindness and goodness the last three is you have to show to others faithfulness gentleness and self control okay so first three from god second three is uh, you have to develop those things and the third is you have to show to others you have to be faithful gentle and you have to be in self control praise god thank you jesus hallelujah and god is expecting each and every one of us to produce this fruit Praise God. Let's go. Okay, your uh, the Bible says that drunk through the Holy Spirit. Okay. John fifteen five. Okay, now I am the true vine, and you are the branches. He that abides in, in me, and I am in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you cannot do nothing. Okay, so for us to provide uh, to 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 uh, produce fruit, we need to abide with. a lord jesus christ and when we abide with the lord jesus christ lord provides us the wine and now through that wine we are providing abundant fruit okay if you go little bit down what happened after producing the fruit herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples why we have been filled with the holy spirit is God wants us each and every one of us to be the disciples of Jesus Christ. What do you mean the word called disciples? The followers of Christ. We are the disciples followers of Christ. 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So once you start to bear fruit, and now when you bear fruit, what happens is the Father is glorified. How? Because the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ is inside of you. And we learn from the Bible that they are here to glorify the Father. I can be a great preacher, a great Christian scholar, a deacon or an elder who is in the church, attend meetings daily. I live a clean moral life, memorize 100 verses of scripture, uh, church choir, it, it talks about uh, it talks about me only. Okay, uh, Sunday school, everything is uh, I was doing, but I was not bearing a single fruit according to the word of God. I was not a preacher or a scholar or a deacon or an elder, but I attended church meetings. I live a clean, uh, I did not live a clean moral life, but okay. I was in the church choirs teaching Sunday school. Okay, 50% of the things uh, I would have been there, but not bearing a single fruit according to the word of God, which means. I am not filled and led and encouraged by the Holy Spirit according to the word of God. Do you, have you seen people saying that I witness for Christ by living a good life? But that's not necessary at all. That's not enough for, uh, that's not enough to live a good life. There are many people who live a uh, uh, who are non-Christians who live good life, a teetotaler, not doing anything, uh, not doing any bad things, but still according to the word of God, God is expecting to produce fruit. So according to the word of God or the Bible or the Christian, Christianity, the only way to demonstrate that you are, uh, what to say, truly following Christ, which means uh, you are doing everything what Christ is saying to us, you have to produce fruit. Which includes others, introducing others to Savior as well. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So that is what holy life is all about. Holy life is not that 365 days going to church. Holy life is a person who is a doer of the word of God. And only way to produce the fruit is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what the scripture says. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So a person will come and say, I have did this, I have did that, I did this, I lived a beautiful life in Christ, I will definitely will go to heaven, this and that. Ask him, do you produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life? Why you are asking not to condemn him? Remember, you should not condemn them, but you need to give him them the knowledge and to get them back into the track which God has called us for. Okay, never ever, if you have been filled or led or guided by the Holy Spirit, those people will never ever condemn people by using the scriptures. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pharisees, they were condemning the people using the scriptures. Because they did not led by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They were not following the word of God. They, they are using, uh, they use the word of God for their own purpose. Only for them, only for them, there are excuses. For others, there's no excuses. So if you say, I witness for Christ by living a good life, the next one is show your fruit. 
Now, only person can bear fruit is a person who has been led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, a spirit, a spirit filled person, he cannot, uh, uh, okay, a spirit filled person, he cannot live a life sharing Christ to others. So, if you say you have been led by the Spirit of God, you have been empowered by the Spirit of God. Now you will definitely share Christ, the way of life to others. You will not say no. Because the Holy Spirit who is inside of you will always insist you to go and do uh, this in the kingdom of God. Praise God, I was reading a, a testimony, okay, uh, where a, a girl from Africa and she had been used for the, the evil powers and to have a relationship with the Satan and other things, okay, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to get into those things, okay. Somewhat she managed to escape from that place and she came back to United States and uh, she get uh, into a Bible college in there and she started to learn the word of God. Okay. Every time she could not able to sleep. Even though she's studying the word of God, she could not able to sleep. And every time he will speak to the church pastor and the church pastor will uh, try to communicate again and again and again and again and again. At one point of time, he could not able to tolerate because this is like uh, going under uh, preacher bondage. So he said that unless and until you practice it, unless, unless and until uh, you ask the Holy Spirit to help, you will be living a defeated life. Praise God. And a lot of uh, every night she used to, uh, could not, not sleep. Whenever she closed the eyes, all the bad things which has happened in, 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 la in long uh, in long years it came to it's affected so much and but still she was studying studying the bible studying the bible and suddenly at one particular point of time she was being filled by the holy spirit and she started to take the holy spirit started to take complete control of his life and now she started to empowered by the holy spirit praise god and that day moment he start she started to have a beautiful sleep and the next day, and she went to the pastor and said that I'm set free from each and everything. Now I'm ready to go and proclaim Christ to others. So immediately she has been set free and immediately she said that I'm ready to go and proclaim Christ to others. The, the, the Holy Spirit told me to reach out to the same people who, who are affected by this kind of affliction. So when you have the Holy Spirit filled you, there is always a, a transformation in your life. So the first thing is we need to experience, first thing is we need to be introduced to a person called Christ. And then you understand through Christ, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. And now the day you have a, a relation, start to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. You have been set free. And down the line, the Holy Spirit leads you to go and reach out to others and bring them back to Christ as well. So if, if, if there is some problems happening in our life, which you could not do anything what uh, the Christ has promised, which means, or if you are not providing any or producing any fruit, which means you are not being filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. So first you come to Christ, your life has been changed. The next you go and 
lead Christ to uh, another one to Christ and it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. That's what the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So the next reason, uh, why, what do you mean by the, uh, what do you, what does it mean to be filled by the Holy Spirit? The next reason is the Holy Spirit changes you inside out. Okay, you not only receive the supernatural power of witnessing Christ to others, which you are filled by the Holy Spirit, but your personality also changes. Your character also changes. Okay, uh, I have been uh, a very uh, short-tempered person. For everything, I used to shout. Okay, and... Uh, before coming into the world, I used to bang the walls. And you know where there was a fight between me and my wife. I went and banged one mirror and I was just hitting the mirror with a... I did not even give full force, okay? I just hit it. The, the mirror was uh, uh, broken down into pieces. And I thought, oh my God, I did not I, I did not hit with force. But uh, this thing has happened. I still recall I had a... Uh, Add some cuts in the hand. Praise God if you see that something is still there. Okay, I'm I'm that kind of a person. Anger, short-tempered. Bang the walls, bang this and bang other things. If I hit with the hand, the sound will be like a, uh, the crackers. But now, when I started to receive the supernatural power, I not only, uh, yes, the, uh, it was gradually, it did not go immediately. Gradually, it was decreasing. It was decreasing. At the same time, I have been used by the Holy Spirit to give the word to others as well. So my personality, my character starts to change. I still remember a person who said, uh, you you will become a, a hardcore uh, drinker and you you know your dad is like this this and other things no one can stop you your life is going to be a mess why you get married he was blasting i was thinking what happened to him all of a sudden he's coming and doing this but after I came into the word i met that person and i shared the testimony and he was so amazed he did not believe me in the start and when he started that um preaching in the YouTube and my channel, this, your videos, going for the retreats. And now we understood, oh my God. So this person's life has been changed. That's what Mark 9.23 says, right? Nothing is impossible for the one who believes. So as you continue walk in the control and the power of the Holy Spirit, when you start producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that fruit not only help others, that fruit is also going to help you as well. You remember one of the uh, uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Self-control. The spirit of self-control is right inside of you to control you not to do anything which you were doing before. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Christian relationship with the Holy Spirit is both critical and progressive. Praise God. It is critical in, in, in what area means. Critical in the sense it's not, uh, the meaning is entirely different over here. Okay. Critical means a person has to live a life of faith rather than the live a life of works. You have to depend on grace and faith all the time. That's what the word of God says, right? Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. So it's critical. You have to live by faith. You have to live based on the things which are not seen. You are going to see the things which are through your eyes of your understanding, through the eyes of your imagination. To the scriptures you're going to see that is what critical and that is progressive which means you are constantly going ahead one step ahead one step ahead one step ahead one step ahead so constantly consistency is the breakthrough for success 
so the holy spirit will teach you to depend on grace and faith it has to be balanced okay you cannot say extreme grace that only god can do anything then you will be at uh, taken for a right by the satan at the same time you cannot say only faith can work you need grace as well then you go into a entire law mentality where you say only faith can work i have to do all these things so it has to be balanced grace and faith has to be balanced and now critical in the sense there is no place for you to operate in emotions there is no place for you to operate in emotions but rather you would take the complete control of emotions that your grace and faith will be in complete control of your life so when you operate in grace and faith and now the word of god will constantly helps you to move from one level of faith to another another level of faith from faith to faith how this happened how this happens when you have been led and controlled and encouraged by the holy spirit so the word of god will say to you not to go according to the emotional experience or emotional circumstances so if you want to grow spiritually word of god should be the base of your spiritual life praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so the grace in titus we have learned that the grace has appeared to all men teaches us how to uh, deny to live ungodliness but teaching us to live soberly beautifully and godly according to the word of god colossians 3:16 says that let the word of christ dwell in you richly praise god thank you jesus hallelujah so the next what we it is changes inside uh, it uh, okay it changes you inside out okay that's what romans 12:2 in uh, passion translation okay see one red message don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit it without even thinking instead fix your attention on god you will be changed from the inside out you will be changed from the inside out for what readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it remember this recognize what jesus god and the holy spirit wants from you and you quickly respond to it unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity god brings the best out of you develops well formed maturity in you the culture around you is dragging you to its level of immaturity but when you are focused only on word which has been filled and controlled and empowered and led by the holy spirit and now god will develop a well formed maturity in you oh my god sorry do not become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into with with it even thinking instead fix your right attention on god see you will be changed from inside out readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it and now last line says that god brings the best out of you develops well formed maturity in you so everything depends upon your decision god has already made that i am going to do so many things in his life but are we ready to go according to what 
God is asking us to do. So that's what the Christian life is full of criticality. Critical is we need to live according to the word of God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the end result of both letting the word of Christ dwell in you and being filled with the Holy Spirit, you will always talk about Lord all the time, quoting psalms and hymns and making music into your heart to the Lord. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 5.19. See, don't drink too much wine that cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God, huge draughts of him. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. Sing songs from your heart to the Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God, the Father in the name of our Master, Jesus Christ. Many a times so he did not shout. Okay. Do not drink too much with wine that cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God, huge draughts of him. Sing hymns instead of songs. Sing songs from your heart. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is what being filled with the Spirit is all about. When you are being filled with the Spirit, results in an abundant and overflowing life. And, and Jesus said, you remember in John chapter 7, uh, I do not know about the verse, might be in the middle. He says that if a man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whosoever believes in me, as scripture has said, the, the, the living waters will flow from him. So he is talking about the spirit. He is talking about the spirit which is later will be given to each and every one of us. And this abundant life Yet most Christians are yet to experience it. And some of the people, their experience little. But some of the people did not experience at all. Now it has to be grow longer and much more stronger and stronger. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so we saw why, what does mean by the filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So next one, the question is, why most of the Christians don't know about the Holy Spirit? Why most of the Christians could not be filled with the Holy Spirit? There's two reasons. One is a lack of knowledge. And the next one is unbelief. So uh, average Christians continues to live in a disobedience to God and they are not filled the Holy Spirit for two reasons. One is the lack of knowledge. As the word, the word of God says, my people has been destroyed by the lack of knowledge. See, at the time when you are uh, born again, you have the power to go on growing toward the maturity in Christ. But still you make a decision not understanding to live by faith. And now your life goes on to a roller coaster, rising and falling, one emotional experience to another emotional experience. When you not live by faith, you go and live by sight. And your sight is always based on the circumstances and emotions. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the other one is unbelief. So there are three ways of unbelief. One is ignorance. The next one is natural unbelief. And the third one is disbelief. Okay, that is John 37, 7, 37 to 39. Uh, uh, 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just, just a minute. Arabara shikari teri shikari teri puru futuru shikari teri shite eri teri shikara hatara puru futuru kubu shite eri teri shishi shikara hala haburu kubu shite eri teri shikara hatara puru futuru shikara hate ndara bara hatara shikari teri kalipe eri teri shikara hatara shikari teri kai. Sorry about that. Okay, press card where I was. Okay, yeah. Uh, why people could not live a life filled with the Holy Spirit? That two reasons is one is the lack of knowledge, the next one is unbelief. So what, what does these two makes is it makes the person not realizing what is already there. It makes a person re, uh, uh, not realizing what God has already completed for us. So why that person uh, operates in the lack of knowledge because of his carnal thinking? If that person is not lives by faith, then he is living by sight, which is based on his thinking, which is based on his senses, that is carnal thinking. Carnal thinking is the person who is based on his senses. So carnal person is the person who allowed his flesh to take control of his life. In other words, he give he, uh, the flesh reclaim the throne of his life through sin. God still have a possession of this person. Christ is still in his life to do mighty wonders. But this individual has fallen into the sin and he wants to do the pleasure of sin again and again and again and again and again. Not yielding to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How come the lack of knowledge? Lack of knowledge is a person not interested to come to the word only. Many a times if the people go and ask and call him, why can't you come for the retreat? It's okay. I'm not interested. But when the problem comes, he will say, okay, let me come to the retreat. And he will sit and listen. But if would have come, come long time back, life would have been much more better for example if i had a lot of uh, i had a lot of invitations to come to the retreat okay because i am in the church everyone understood that i am a, a holy person there are so much of uh, invitations for me to come to the retreat Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But I rejected it, lack of knowledge. But now I, I, I understood that. If it have been gone to the word long time before, my life would have been changed long time back. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go and see one verse. You will come to know 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Here and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet you are you able. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see in some other translation, easier translation. Okay, so he is saying, brothers and sisters, when I was there, I could not talk to you in the way I talk to people who are led by the Spirit. I had to talk to you like an ordinary people of the world. You were like babies in Christ. And the teaching I gave you was like milk, not solid food. I did this because you were not ready for solid food. And even now you are not ready. You are still not following the spirit. You are jealous of each other and you are always arguing with each other. This shows that you are still following your own selfish desires. You are acting like an ordinary people of this world. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the worldly or the carnal Christian certainly experiences the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but will not continue to uh, will not continue in a sense and indefinitely otherwise. So a person who has experienced the conviction of the Holy Spirit, he will never ever continue to do his sins. Praise God. But the person who still experiences the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but uh, he says, no, it's not true. It cannot work in my life. Then he is going to be in a problem. So the carnally person or the worldly person or the carnal Christian, God gives a chance through the Holy Spirit that he wants to come to the life of spirit. From carnal Christian, he has to move to a spiritual Christian. That's what God is uh, God, uh, God is willing. That's what God uh, is all about. Everyone has to come into repentance and to join him. But the decision has to be based on this individual. So I was a carnal Christian. I got a conviction power of the Holy Spirit. Now I have stopped, stopped continuing in the sin. If I'm if if uh, if I do not consider this conviction of the Holy Spirit, now my life will be always defeated and fruitless. Now what I do, I will depend on the self effort. I will try to do everything that is of the world. Instead of experiencing joy, blessing and fellowship of the God, Holy Spirit and the Holy Trinity, now I make sure that I, have, I lost everything because of my decision. A person who is led by the world or carnal thinking, even though uh, uh, he is get the conviction power of the Holy Spirit, Still, uh, what to say, he cannot be satisfied the old way, uh, cannot be satisfied the new way he wants to go on the old way. See, for example, there are so many people, the word has been given. Okay, they came, they tasted and they experienced, but the worldly pleasures took them back, showing that this is good. So the current life through the Holy Spirit, they are not satisfied. And they want to live a old life again. I know a person okay, who came, who listened to the word, understood the word of God, and he left the alcohol and he was enjoying. All of a sudden, everything has been turned. He's nowhere found. I tried to reach him. He never attends the call. The, the call is ringing, full ring, and never attended the, the message is nothing. 
So what I could do, only I could pray for the Holy Spirit to open his spiritual eyes. And after a long time, I came to know from his family that he wants to live an old life and even he is not with us. We, they also do not know where they went, where he went. So, instead of searching of happiness and fulfillment, this person has become a... So, whether a carnal person, a spiritual person, it, it, it does not guarantee that a spiritual person can live a carnal life or a carnal person can live a spiritual life. It depends upon the decision what he takes in his life. So, the state of that particular person who still want to self-centered has become increasingly confused, frustrated, doesn't know what to do, where to go. And, and his life is full of miserable. At the end, he might lose his life as well. So that's what I said. So the carnal people are not realizing what is already there. Christ has done everything on the cross for each and every one of us. Our work is to only to believe that everything has been already done. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So what made the Christians not to be filled with the Holy Spirit is because lack of knowledge and unbelief, which leads them to a worldly and carnal way. When you were when you are fulfilling the worldlies or carnal way, you will not experience the fulfillment or, or led by the Holy Spirit because you don't want to live that life. You want to live a life of a pleasure of this world. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the last one. Uh, what was the question? The question was... Uh, Okay. Uh, oh, I missed the questions. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. The fifth question is, how can you be filled with the Holy Spirit? So we studied about who is Holy Spirit. We studied about why did he come? We studied about what is the meaning to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we studied about why an average Christian is not filled by the Holy Spirit. There are two reasons. One is uh, lack of knowledge, carnal thinking. The next one is unbelief. We have studied about the unbelief. So now I'm not getting into those things. The fifth one, how can you be filled by the Holy Spirit? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So how can a person... Be filled by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what I'll do is it's already time and uh, and there are some other steps which we need to be followed. So we will uh, go go with the. Uh, we I will teach this in the another session. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We will will stop here. And uh, how to being filled with the Holy Spirit, that's what the main teaching is all about. But before that, we need to understand some other things. Otherwise, this won't work. So we, the Holy Spirit told, don't go fast. So go slow. And uh, the next class, I will take a revision of what we studied. And then when we'll go, the steps of to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. I've already stopped here. Oh, it's already six, going to be 6.20. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So thank you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. And the announcements, uh, we have uh, the Konkani retreat 
in Maramajal starts on 22nd to 25th and the Hindi retreat in Mumbai will be from 18th to 22nd and uh, the next Konkani retreat in uh, Ulal in Mangalore would be from May 6th to 9th. The youth retreat in Vasai will be on May 1st to 10th and youth retreat in Mangalore will be from 10th to 26th. All these things are updated in the website so please register yourself and avoid the last time registration. Praise God and every day we are Monday to Saturday we have Canada class. Praise God and we have global classes every afternoon and tomorrow Sister Samantha will come and she will experience how she experienced the word of God in her life as well. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's pray in tongues for a few minutes and then we will close the session with the Thanksgiving prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's sign ourselves. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord. You are taught about who is Holy Spirit, why God has given us the Holy Spirit, what does it mean to be filled by the Holy Spirit, and why the average Christians could not be able to be not filled by the Holy Spirit because of the lack of knowledge. Thank you, Lord, for hel helping us to teaching this topic. And now we could understand what is this all about. And we could prepare ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit all the days of our life. We studied that only through the Holy Spirit we can experience the supernatural life, that is to go and serve others. The top priority which God has came to this planet Earth is to serve others but not to be served. He expecting the same thing for us to do as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And now we understood that you have filled us. That is, we allow you to take control of our lives, to walk in the Spirit, to do everything, to be sensitive to the Word, and to do everything what the Word of God teaches us. As we are moving out of this place, Holy Spirit, help us to understand whatever we studied over here. Help us to put into practice so that we can also be Jesus to others as well. We thank you and we praise you in the glorious and mightiest name of Jesus. Let's all God people say Amen, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we will see you back tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. IST. Trust us all and always be a blessing to the nation. Bye-bye.